According to the U.S. Small Business Administration, small companies employ half of all private sector workers in this country. Well, here are some of the current challenges and concerns facing small businesses today is Lynn Tannenbaum, the CEO of Fifth Street Finance, a private equity and business development company based in Greenwich. Lynn, good having you on the program for the first time. Thanks for having me. You started your own business, so you've lived this firsthand. Oh, yeah. Um, what are you hearing from small companies today with regard to the challenges that they're facing? Look, there's real challenges to come. When I started 15 years ago, it was just me in a basement. Actually, I rented out the other half of the basement to save money. And we've grown it into uh, a billion three in assets. And, and what we do is we lend to small businesses, middle-sized businesses. And we are now going around the state of Connecticut, more in conjunction with a pack that I started called KeepingAmericaCompetitive.org. But we're going around the state of Connecticut, asking small business owners, minority business owners and others, what is important to you? And what we're finding is demand. Mm -hmm. We're losing people. The state of Connecticut continues to lose people. Um, in New Haven uh, and Bridgeport, uh, we're seeing an exodus of people. Why? Maybe the tax rate is too close now with our surrounding neighbors, New York. And people are, are, are making the change, at, and maybe we didn't invest enough in our infrastructure. Well, I'm, I'm wondering, I know the governor says that he's making a, a tremendous efforts to encourage businesses to come into Connecticut. We look at the film industry, the tax incentive that was offered there. Sure. Is Connecticut doing enough in that area? Look, the governor is doing some good things with encouraging certain businesses, biotechnology industry, yes. which, which he's spending $2 billion on, spent $750 million on a special interest group in, in Stanford to, to generate that. So in pockets, but those are special interest groups. The problem is when you have st a state tax, that's the highest it's ever been, uh, that's comparable now to New York, in fact, almost equal. Mm -hmm. um, one of the big advantages to Connecticut was it's a low tax state. The other big advantage to Connecticut was its regulatory environment was, was reasonably good for business. Today, we have more regulation than ever before. When a small business starts in the state of Connecticut within a week, you know what they get? Mm. They get a tax, they get a bill. For $250, they don't get a letter saying, here's all the goods and services this state can offer you. They get a bill. Well, I'm <laughs> sure your PAC has talked then to the governor about this and, and or his people about sure. this. And what's the answer? Why? Look, uh, there, there's different ways to do things. And um, the, the important thing is we need to help the middle class, but we need to help demand. And small businesses really need demand. They need lower regulation. They demand, they need training. A really good thing that's happened is Stanford. So Stanford has a new entrepreneurial center. Mm -hmm. That is exactly the type of thing that we need. And that's really exciting to have an entrepreneurial center where entrepreneurs can sit side by side and talk to each other and help each other. Like an incubator. And that, see, there are some good things that are coming out mm -hmm. that are definitely being done in the state. And there's one really positive thing that's being done. Um, education, um, helping, helping kids understand even. Uh, even at the Norwalk Aquarium, helping helping with the environment, busing kids in, and I'm on the senior advisory board here in the Norwalk Aquarium. And mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's good stuff that's happening. Small businesses generating excitement all over the place. But what we what we really need is certainty, a landscape, and uh, a small business owner needs to plan. What about capital? That is, was the biggest complaint from small businesses from 2008 to 2011 or so. They just couldn't get their hands right. on any money. Right. Is that loosened up at all? It's not that. That's not the problem anymore. And we're, you know, we loan. Uh, one of our funds is 225 million. The SBA just gave us another license for over 100 million. Uh, so we loan to 67 small and mid-sized businesses. But there may be money in the country. But, but they, can they access it? It's it's fine if the money's there. They can. They don't need to access it because they don't have the demand to access it for it. They need the demand. You need, you need our state and, and the country to generate demand. The way you do that is be by being competitive, by, by being efficient, and by, by making, making us a globally competitive country. Our global competitiveness over the last five years has dropped from first place. Last year, it's fifth place. Now it's seventh place. It just came out mm -hmm. days ago. We're seventh place in the world in competitive. This is America. Mm -hmm. We should be number one. What about the, uh, the, the election coming up and the uncertainty? Because in our previous interview, we talked about both the candidates and they, their views on the economy are very different. And the way we, we instill growth in our economy, yes. they're very different. What are you hearing from small business owners about the upcoming election? Okay, let's talk about there's some differences, there's some similarities, and there's some partisanship. And par I can't stand partisanship. So let's talk about the, some of the similarities, first of all. Mm -hmm. Infrastructure spend is going to happen no matter what. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter who controls it. It's a bipartisan issue. We need our roads fixed. We need our bridges fixed. We need Tappan bridges. Got to be fixed. I mean, this stuff has to happen. Sure. And it's going to happen. So no matter what, next year, you're going to see a lot of infrastructure spend. Very excited about that. The infrastructure bill did pass. 
Um, if Barack Obama wins, I believe that the stock market will drop almost immediately um, and we will have a real problem because the demonizing of business and business owners are really scared uh, about him winning because he's definitely said, you know, we're against big business, we're against middle-sized business, we're against business owners, and we don't believe entrepreneurs created your own company. That mm -hmm. drives me nuts as an entrepreneur. Oh, a lot of people are concerned about the tax code, too. I mean, w what kind of impact, and as we have the payroll Obama tax? Obamacare more than the tax code. Okay. For small business, it's not really the tax code, it's more... The cost of health The cost of health care. All right, what about a Romney administration? Okay, Romney wins. Uh, I think the market rallies for a very short period of time and then goes down anyway. And the reason that happens is Romney's very a practical problem solver. He realizes there's got to be real cuts uh, to spending. He's got real entitlement cuts. He realizes there has to be some revenue loopholes closed and that has to be dealt with. And most likely, Romney's a practical guy. He's going he's gonna to do that in the first year of the administration. We have to have some pain to clean the mess up. No matter what, we yeah. have to deal with this entitlement program. Either side wins. We have to deal with this problem. All right, Len, good having you on the program. Len right. Tannenbaum. Thank you for having me. All right. And we'll be back with more 12 on the Money. We're going to take a break first.